longer than me anyway. How long have you been in the business, Chantal? Um, 13 and a half years. 13 and a half years, that's a long time. And she's been on four overseas conferences and uh, she's Silver Executive. So um, well done, Chantal, and welcome to our team webinar. Thank you very much and over to you. Okie dokie. Right, okay. So you're now going to hear our story so far and I like to put it as, as I remember it anyway, because when you've been in the business as long as we have, you do remember different things, okay? And um, I remember it being a lot harder than possibly it was, um, but and that's okay, that's fine. So my story starts, I was a home mum and Jerry was a long distance lorry driver. So he was away a hell of a lot. Um, he would go out at two o'clock in the morning, come home, um, you know, when the kids were in bed. And I was really basically on my own. Um, so I'd been out with a friend of mine, just having a cup of tea and a, and a whinge and a moan like we ladies do and we're very good at. And um, I've been chatting to my friend Ali and, and she said, you know what? She said, you always seem to be saying you've got no money, Chantal. She said, have you ever thought about cleaning your better wear? And I said, you know what, Ali? I'd have to be desperate to do that. Absolutely desperate. Because you know what? I really didn't believe that you could make any money doing clean easy. How wrong was I? Because I needed the income, you see. So I was looking for 50 pound a week. And I'm sure many of you on here were also looking for 50 pound a week. You know, you don't, you know, come into this business with any huge expectations. Well, I don't, you know, I don't know that you have. Well, I didn't. Um, I, in fact, joined just to prove to myself that it wouldn't work. So anyway, I'd seen a newspaper ad and I've been looking at it for probably a year. So that'll tell you how undecided I was as to whether I was going to look at it or not. And eventually I, I sort of, against my better judgment, maybe rang the ad. And when the lady answered the phone, I, I pestered her and I pestered her and I said, look, you know, we'll go no further if you don't tell me what the company is. So eventually she told me that it was clean easy. And I said, well, if that's what it is, don't bother because I'm really not interested. So anyway, she said, look, Chantel, she said, that's absolutely your prerogative. She said, but why don't you make an, you know, let me bring a video around and you can then make an informed decision. What a wise thing to say. She really showed posture at that point. So anyway, she came round, parked outside my house, popped a video through my door. This is how long ago it was. Oh, my God. Anyway, she pulled up outside my house in an f -Reg Cavalier. Oh, my goodness. I thought my heart stunk. I thought, what can she show me? How can she show me to be rich driving a Cavalier, battered up old car? Anyway, that just shows what a snob I was at that point. I was broke, but I was still a snob. Okay. So anyway, I went to the door, picked up the video off of the floor, and I sat back on my bum, played with my kids, did what I needed to do, picked Katie up from school. And anyway, she rang me back at five o'clock that afternoon and she said, have you had time to watch the video, Chantel? And I said, oh, do you know what? I've been so busy. I haven't had a chance to watch it. And she said, do you know what? That's great. She said, uh, you know, it's only 10 minutes long, but I need to get it out to somebody else. So I'll be around in 10 minutes. And I thought, chic, how dare she? So anyway, I promptly got off my backside and I put the video in and I watched it. And I thought, you know what? If this is true, this looks pretty cool. So anyway, I found her back. No, sorry, I didn't find her back. She came round and I dragged her in off the door and I said, tell me more about it. I signed there and then. Did I have the money? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't have the money, but I just had to sort things out. OK. So the question there is, how many of you had a partner like mine who said you're on your own? I bet there's a few of you out there. Well, do you know what? It didn't matter what you thought because I was going to do it anyway. You know, he was away from home, so I was on my own. I had no choice. You know, there was always so much month left when the money had long gone. I were two small children. I just wanted some cash in my pocket. I was fed up with being broke, okay? But the thing is, I was just broke financially. I was broke emotionally. I, I joined a previous network, which had absolutely flopped big time. In fact, before we joined Clean Easy, we just fought off a bankruptcy, not a bankruptcy, sorry, nearly having our house repossessed. 
And that's how close we got. We've been living on baked beans and potatoes for months. You know, the kids were eating well, but we weren't. You know, so we are in a pretty bad place. And when you speak to people that have got no money, then, you know, you just have to try and find out what it is they're really looking for and how badly they want to change their lives. Because do you know what? We really needed to change our lives. And even though we've been in another network and it cost us a lot of money, we'd actually come away from that with a lot of networking knowledge and a fact that networking was the answer, but we just had to find the right vehicle. OK, so you will come across people just like me. There's loads of us out there, loads, you know, people that, are, that feel like a failure, that, that have got their self-esteem lower than lower than low. OK, but don't prejudge them. OK, be patient. Just be patient because I was not the best recruit when I joined because I had a really bad attitude. And that was because I felt so bad about myself. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about a fabulous book that I read, and this, this really has inspired um, how I put my story together. And it's the book is called The Impossible Just Takes a Little Longer by a guy called Art Berg. Now, I'll just repeat that so you can write it down if you want to. The Impossible Just Takes a Little Longer by Art Berg. Now, what this story is about is about a young guy who had everything, absolutely everything. He was in, he was clever. You know, he, he was sporty. He had a beautiful girlfriend and, you know, everything in his life was rosy. Now, he had to um, go in a, on a journey which took him across the desert. And um, it was a very long drive. And he was there with a friend of his and they took turns in driving. And unfortunately, in the middle of the night, his friend who was driving fell asleep. And the car flipped over three or four times, resulting in art being thrown across um, the desert. And he ended up being quadriplegic. Now, the story really is all about his realisation that he was never going to work, never going to walk again and not being able to do anything for himself at all. But he proved all the doctors wrong because he had a great attitude. His girlfriend stood by him. His family were amazing. But what he did, he made a decision that he was going to do something that nobody else could do. Now, Told he would never walk again, he would never be able to feed himself, he certainly wouldn't be able to father any children, um, there was no point in getting married. He had, you know, don't you just love the way these doctors are so positive and so, you know, come on, I'll... no, 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 there was none of that. And they put him through so much unnecessary hurt and pain just to prove that he would never be able to do anything. Well, anyway, in 1993, he set a world record to be the first quad of his level to race in the 325 mile, mile ultra marathon. Now he says in his book that courageous people aren't unafraid. The problem isn't what you can't do, it's what you won't do. Don't let a bad day turn into a bad life. And remember, some miracles take time. Live each day with passion and purpose. Do the impossible. Now, this book is now out of production, but, you know, um, if you can get it, go on to um, go, go to Amazon because I picked it up for two pounds. It actually was um, recommended to me by Doug Roper, um, who I listen to because I think it's really inspirational. But it's one of my favorite, favorite books. Um, so I really would recommend it. Anyway, in his book, he talks about five steps to overcome paralysis. And you're probably thinking that's a really weird title. But for me, um, paralysis of the mind I really did because my belief was so low it was just well I had none okay and what we don't realize is our true potential so the first one is self-motivation and Jim Rohn says if you're waiting for someone else to turn up to motivate you what are you going to do if they don't turn up it's a bit scary isn't it so you really just got to get up and do it on your own so I just had to get on with it no matter how I felt now, you'll see from this slide, there's just a few things here. But, you know, when you go to a rally, I don't know about you, um, that's where I get my passion from. You know, that's where I, when I sit in those seats and I'm watching everybody else succeed and I'm part of the excitement and the, you know, the rah, rah, shish, combat, I love all of that. You know, and that was where I felt really, really comfortable. You know, someone pat me on the back and saying, gosh, I'd say, you can do it, you can do it. But I tell you what, I don't know about you, but when I got home, that little devil on my shoulder was always ready to remind me that I couldn't do it, to remind me that what did I think, why did I think I could be any better than anyone else? 
why did I think I could be financially independent? You can't do that. I'd grown up in a, in a family where money was always an issue. Money always caused arguments. You know, there was never enough to go around and we were always broke. So that's the belief system that I grew up with. And I'm actually doing at the moment um, a, a process where I'm going through um, trying to get rid of that out of my mind. Um, and it's it's hard because it's it's ingrained. Um, and so one thing I would say to you is, you know, understand that your past does not exist. It just exists in your mind. And the only reason that you remember this stuff is because you recall it. So don't. When you feel it coming, shut it down. Think of something positive. Pick up a book. Listen to some inspirational music. Because you can. You absolutely can get rid of that little devil on your shoulder and change it for an angel that's going to help you. Okay? Now, the only way, again, that you're going to stop that from happening is if you have a plan. Have a plan in place. If you haven't got a plan written down right now, when we're finished this evening, I really would recommend that you do that. You know, talk to Nick, talk to Grace, because you have a brilliant, brilliant upline, guys. Really. You know, I wish that, you know, I had someone like that on my team, you know, encouraging me and, and telling me that I could do it. Because my sponsor, who isn't in the business anymore, just used to say to me, oh, Chantal, stop whinging, get on with it. Just get on with it. You can do this standing on your head. It used to be her favourite phrase, you know. And even though she, I knew I could, did I believe I could? No. So, you know, you have a brilliant, brilliant system in place with your guys that, that are leading your team. So, you know, just if you're feeling not quite right or you don't know how to put a plan together, pick up the phone and, and get it sorted. Okay. Because your plan will inspire you to take action, you know, and, and sort of failure to plan is planning to fail. We've all heard that. You know, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, just going over old stuff here, but, you know, it's true. And motivation is passion and emotion. And you must feel it. You know, you've got to feel it in your heart. Believe you me, my heart's thumping in my chest right now. <laughs> OK, right. So anyway, I attended my first meeting and I was hooked, absolutely hooked. Because meetings, as I said before, were my comfort zone. That's where I felt at home. Do you think Baz was excited yet? <laughs> I can tell you categorically not. OK, so it was down to me and my son, Jack, and off we went. Those hundred catalogues went under the buggy and off we went. Our first pickup was £75.90. You know, and that just proved to me that it worked. I hadn't asked anyone to buy anything. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just put my catalogues out and hoped for the best. And I got a result. So I was really excited. This works. That's all I needed. One order was all I needed to prove that it worked. So all I needed to do now was prove it to Baz. That was going to be the challenging bit. OK, so our second step to the to overcome the process is preparation. And Jackie Joyner Kersey says it's better to look ahead and prepare than to look back and regret. It's human nature, unfortunately, to look back because that's what we do. Now, if you just if you will just imagine, you know, a circle, that's your comfort zone. And, um, you know, when you think about things and it's something that comes second nature. You don't really have to worry about it. That's your comfort zone. Now, when you're in the growth zone, it's when you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit panicked, a little bit, oh, I don't like the feeling of this. So maybe when you're going to make your first call, when you're going to do your first appointment, or even if you're going to go out and pick up your first bunch of catalogues, you may feel uncomfortable. And also the next one outside of that is your panic zone. Now, for me, when I first started, I was constantly panicked. I constantly worried about what people thought about what I was doing, what my family thought, what my husband thought. And you know what? You've just got to do it anyway, no, more, no matter what anyone thinks. And now when you start to stretch your comfort zone, you will find that, you know, things will start to happen a little bit, which aren't, you know, things that you're used to. So physical, you will have to work harder than you've ever worked before because you're working for yourself. You know, you've just got to get out there and you've got to do it. Mental, I'm a bit mental, which is a good thing. But anyway, don't be surprised at how mentally drained you'll feel because you will spend a lot of time thinking about this business because you're dreaming, you're goal setting, you know, and, and it will tire you out. But do offset that with action. Now, 
I put here, just made me chuckle when I see this. OK, emotional. You will feel at times like you're on a, like you're on a roller coaster because the ups and downs, you know, are, can be hideous when you first start. And as you go along in a business, you get a few people in your business. It's not quite so up and down. It tends to sort of flatten out a little bit. But, you know, <laughs> I still think I'm on that roller coaster. I don't think I've ever gotten off. So if you feel like me, you're OK. Don't worry. All right. And financially, to go from the growth comfort zone to the growth zone, you need to invest in yourself. You know, books, CDs, events. You know, there's so much stuff that you can get for free. Go to the library, but go online. There's loads of stuff that's free. You know, you can get nearly everything that Jean Rohn's ever done. You know, and all, all this stuff is all there for free. You know, borrow books. I've got a library in my house. So anyone that is close by, they can come by and borrow a book for a month and then change it the next month. So, you know, again, if, you, if you've got that and you've got a few people in your business, do make sure you utilise that rather than keeping all your books on your bookshelf and making you feel good. Get them out of your team. Sometimes you'll get them back. Sometimes you won't. But you just got to hope they're doing some good somewhere. OK. Right. OK. So a study of happiness. Two Harvard psychologists did a study a group of people that considered themselves to be happy. Now, what do you think they all had in common? Do you think it was money? Do you think it was good health? Do you think it was loving relationships? No, it was none of the, none of the above. You know, they all knew what they wanted. They knew what made them feel good about themselves and they felt of value. In one word, they had direction. But when you've got direction in your life, you're headed, you know, headed in the right direction. You start to feel good about yourself and it will make you feel happy. OK. So back to my story. Asked constantly. I did. I was always on the phone. You know, when I first joined, I needed to earn 50 quid a week to prove to Baz that it worked. And so I said to my sponsor, right, you just tell me what I need to do to earn 50 quid a week. And he said, off you go with your catalogues, 250 catalogues once a week. If you haven't earned 50 pound at the end of the week, he said, you just got to do more. And that was his advice. I can tell you what, I stuck to it. And did I do £250 every week? Yes, I did. Some weeks I did more, but I never did less. And the reason I never did less was I needed £50 a week. OK, so you need to know what you want to earn and then you just got to work to achieve it. OK, so I just talked about their advice. Never be too proud to ask questions, because if you don't know the answer, what on earth are you going to do? You have to ask. And that's why we're here. Do you think he was convinced yet? No, no. Um, but I didn't care because I knew it worked. So I just had a point to prove. And believe you me, I was going to. So I hit the ground running. Our next next one here is pace. So run with your legs to be fast. Run with your mind to be faster. And run with your heart to be unstoppable. And if you, you know, when you think about this business, if it makes your heart beat faster, you're in the right business. It does for me, and I hope it does for you. I won't pronounce her name because I don't know how to, so we'll leave that. Okay. Please do remember to to pace yourself because you know um, this is not a sprint; it's a marathon. And another great book um, I would highly recommend for you is um, Dr. Tom Barrett's book, Dare to Dream and Work to Win. And in there, he talks about um, a racehorse and a pack horse. And basically, you're different. Your racehorse looks great in the stalls, looks really sexy, ready to go, snorting, can't wait to get going. But they will run themselves out really quickly. Now, your pack horse, on the other hand, is dependable. Maybe a little bit slower, but dependable. They keep going and going and going. Give me a pack horse over a racehorse any day. You know, they may look shiny and lovely, but your pack horse will stay with you. And be dependable and reliable okay so just watch out that you don't go too fast out the gates or you may well find yourself on a detour that you didn't expect so i got a wiggle on back to my story first full period um we had a team turnover of 4200 and i had an income of 619 pound 90p with two people uh, sorry four people in the team now at that point um the first goal that i set was to take my family to Legoland. And the reason I wanted to go to Legoland was because so many people had spoke about it in the playground and said how fantastic it was. And believe you me, 
my budget at the time was tighter than in a tight corset. So there was no give. All right. If I didn't find the money elsewhere, we weren't going. And you can see that a smile on my kids' faces was well worth getting wet, getting fed up, having the cat look thrown at me, you know, follow me back up the path. Who cares? I took my children on a, you know, on a, on a day out that they loved and it was worth all the effort. OK. <clears throat> that was closely followed then by two more holidays. Um, you know, um, the one in the middle, by the way, on the uh, left hand side is not my child. Um, he's he's, uh, you know, out, out of one of the Disney movies. So none of my kids are quite that skinny. Um, <laughs> so there's Katie and Jack there having fun in um, Euro Disney. And on the other side, um, we have Katie and Jack having fun in um, Universal Studios in Spain. So that was great because, you know, my main motivator really when I joined was to be able to provide my family with a bit of fun because we hadn't had any fun. OK, we just had a lot of stress and no money. And now we were going to have some fun. But then, funnily enough, um, we skidded to a very dramatic halt. And why, you may say, because it was going so well. Well, the trouble was at that point, um, I hadn't set any more goals. I'd achieved what I set out to achieve, um, but I just didn't have anything more in place. So I had nothing to strive for. So I had no purpose, no dream, no reason. Um, we had some in, some out. Something needed to change. But guess what? Who needed to change? We did, you know, desperately, for sure. <clears throat> so our next step is focus. <clears throat> Sorry. Mark Twain said, you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. And that was the trouble. We were severely lacking in focus. And at that point, you know, that that's why we felt so panicked um, and overwhelmed because, you know, we had no goals. So we didn't really know what we were doing. Well, I didn't anyway. Um, I even considered giving up at this point, um, but we decided to plow on anyway. Um, and sometimes this, this process can get quite painful if you lose focus. Um, but when you break through, when you when you come back and regain your focus, you will have a sense of pride and self-worth, which I believe is absolutely priceless. Aha, OK, so um, in uh, August of 2002, um, Baz left his work. <laughs> oh, dear, that wasn't such a great idea, was it? Um, I think I possibly skipped a slide here, Nick. You just aha. That makes more sense. Right. OK. So as I said, yeah, in August 2002, we made a momentous decision. Um, Barry left his driving job. We unfortunately just got a bit of bad advice at this point. Um, and uh, we believed that we would be earning a lot more than we were um, once we went full time. Um, and that didn't happen. So on the back of that information, Barry left his job. And the reason it was such a massive mistake was because obviously whatever I'd been earning, and was for treat money. So we had spare money to go out and have fun and put better food in the fridge and all this kind of good stuff. Um, but what he was earning was paying our bills. And he was earning about two grand a month at that point. So he was on a very good uh, income. Um, so with a massive loss of income, with the same outgoings as we had before, being replaced by my £1,500 a month, we were much, much worse off. You know, back to where we started, but I would actually say we were probably worse off than that. Um, so that, that was that was scary. So we then fell into the trap of massive retail. Now, this is not a bad thing, because if you need the money initially, if you need a big income. If you've been made redundant or whatever, that's fantastic. When you're trying to team build, it's not the best route. OK, so our business stagnated because we had no free time to help and support the team. Um, but then just out of the blue, one of our guys came to us and said, I'd really like to qualify for Prague. Um, do you think I can do it? And we said, yeah, of course you can. Great. We'll help you. Um, and needless to say, he qualified for Prague. Um, and then we moved up to that lovely, lovely title of senior. Oops. For those of you that don't understand yet the marketing plan, senior is not a good place to be. And uh, ask Nick and Grace, OK, is not the best plan. So there you are. Avoid it if you can. 
At this point, um, we had a bit of a family crisis, which I won't go into now um, because <laughs> you don't want to know, believe you me. But I'm sure that, you know, you can relate to that because whenever you make a decision, whatever it is, you know, uh, to make changes for the better, there's always going to be that curveball waiting to be thrown in your direction. Trust me, <laughs> always. But Clean Easy was still there for us, which was great. It's a forgiving business. That's what I love about it. Now, if I can give you one piece of advice this evening, and I really hope you do take it on board, is the one challenge that we had was goal setting or lack of it, because I totally, totally lost belief in myself and my ability. And Barry wouldn't even discuss it. So we were on a winner there, weren't we? <laughs> OK, so if I can give you one piece of advice, guys, for goodness sake, get over it, because your business won't grow without it. You know, it absolutely will not grow without it. So, you know, sit down and set some goals. So number five is momentum. And Tom Watson said, sometimes thinking too much can destroy momentum. And I think you probably already heard me say earlier, this is something that I'm incredibly guilty of. You know, I think far too much and I don't do enough. Um, or, you know, that was the case. So um, that's been changed, believe you me. Right, so now came the real game changer for me because the Sydney qualification had been announced. Now, um, they changed the, uh, the uh, qualification, which is great, which meant that uh, anyone that moves up to Imperial 10 2004 and holds for one month, they will go to Sydney. Wow, <clears throat> that was pretty exciting. And I made the decision, sat in my seat on that day, that we were going. We weren't sure how because we've been sat at uh, senior for 18 months, um, but we weren't going to miss it because it was such a great opportunity. So we got the team together and we hatched a plan to bronze. We went from a 14,000 turnover to 28,000 turnover in just four weeks. Now, if we can do it, anyone can. And all it is down to momentum, a plan and momentum. The team were amazing. This is where we met our dear friends, Ram and Sylv Lang and Alf and Carol Bell who are probably our best, best friends in the business because we've known them for a very long time. Um, and uh, this is also uh, the first time we've met Chris and Wendy Mason Paul. And um, you think that's funny, wouldn't you? Because they're actually our upline, upline, upline. Um, but where we were in the business, we didn't really get to know them. Um, and when we got into our hotel room in uh, Sydney, there was a bottle of champagne and a box of chocolates waiting for us with a card welcoming us and congratulating us from two people that we've never even met. I was impressed. So needless to say, um, off we went to find them and thank them and we've been great friends ever since. Um, so that was just lovely. As you can see there, I actually spoke, this is the first time I spoke um, in front of anybody really, um, 300 odd people, our level and above, scary, oh my goodness, oh yeah. I was terrified, but I loved it really, but it was scary. Now, the reason this trip was just so special um, was because um, that's where my sister Boots lives. And you're probably thinking, why on earth would anybody have a name like Boots? Well, when she was a young girl, she would only wear wellies, even to church. OK, she would not wear her shoes, even though she had lovely shoes to wear. She would not wear them. So that was where her nickname came from. Um, and uh, we were extremely close and uh, she was basically my mum. She took over my mum's role because she left when I was very young. Um, and there was us seven kids and, and I was uh, I am still the youngest. Um, but um, she basically took over that role, which was fantastic. But she moved out there about 18 years before that. And um, out of the whole family, apart from one of us, I was the only one that hadn't been to visit. And that was again was my primary motivator. And you know what, it doesn't matter what your motivator is, just use it, use it and abuse it, because if it makes you do more, then go for it. So off we went to Sydney and um, Clean Easy allowed us to um, take our children, which was fantastic. So when we got there, we dropped our kids off with my sister and we went off and did the Clean Easy thing for a week. And um, then we spent two weeks after that with my sister, which was just amazing. And when I think about it now, it makes me feel very emotional, but it was all because of Clean Easy. If I hadn't found Clean Easy or if Clean Easy hadn't found me, I still would be waiting for that trip because there's no way on this planet in the state we were in, will we have ever been able to afford that trip. So, you know, 
thank goodness for Queen Nadine. And I think, you know, the one thing that really hit home to me um, was that, you know, when I realised that I'd been away for three weeks, I hadn't put out one single catalogue, and I still came home to a bronze exec check. Result, I had residual income, and it took for that to happen, you know, before I realised, and that was just amazing. So we came home very excited, and the momentum continued. We then went on to qualify for Rio de Janeiro, and that was just amazing. I mean, just the little touches that Clean Easy do. Remember, they um, when we went up to the Cork of Ardo, they'd actually uh, paid for them not to open it for two hours. So we had the time to be up there, take photos, you know, and all that kind of good stuff. And all of a sudden, I just heard this little plane flying across. I looked over and it said, and it says, welcome Clean Easy, on this, you know, flying off the back of this plane. You know, and I don't know any other company that will do these lovely little touches that make you feel so special. So we had, you know, we had a schooner trip out to a private island. We had beach barbecues, um, you know, gala dinners. You know, it was just, oh, my goodness. One of my favourite places, one of my favourite, favourite places. And I will go back and I will take my children. This is somewhere that I really want to go. <clears throat> now, this is where things got really tough for us, guys, because I'll go back a minute. Um, we had made a, a momentous business decision for us. Um, we had made the decision that we were going to be on our own. We were just going to do things our way because um, we felt more comfortable with that. Um, and then Mauritius was on the cards. So we set to work again. But this time things were different. Um, I think probably about a couple of days before the qualification finished, um, a couple of our guys had gone on holiday and we said, don't worry, you know, give us your list. You customers and we'll, we'll do your drop and pick up for you so we can get that order on just in case we need it. No, yeah, great, that's fantastic. And I remember being out picking up those last bunch of catalogues and I sat down on the wall and I was just in tears. And I said to Baz, I said, I don't know why we're doing this because we're not going to qualify. No matter, and it was too tight, it, you know, the margins were so small. And um, I, I all of a sudden looked up to the sky and four Spitfires went over. Um, and the reason that's so special is because when I was a very small child, I to sit and watch war films with my dad and he unfortunately is no longer here he passed away when I was 15 um, but every time I see anything to do with, with um, Spitfires particularly or Lancaster planes I know it's something to do with my dad that's just a connection that we have and I knew at that point he just gave me a huge kick up the backside and said come on my girl this is not my girl you're not a quitter get up get on and you know what we did it and we qualified with 0.25 percent spare Talk about seat your pants, right? Okay, so there you go. Right, okay. So then was Mauritius. Now this trip was very different from the rest of them um, because it was so laid back and quiet. Um, and it gave me so much time to think. <sighs> Dangerous you're thinking, aren't you? Because you know what I think I am and this is not good. Okay, so when we got back, I really stepped back from the business because I had completely lost interest. Um, I'd lost belief in myself again. God, this is boring, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but thank goodness that uh, Barry took no notice and carried on anyway. And he was the one at that point that kept us in the business. It had nothing to do with me, believe you me. So as you can see, we qualified for three consecutive international conferences. But I still wasn't sure that networking was my forte. There was so many outside influences. Um, but, you know, that's life, you know. Crap happens, guys. Just get over it. You know, things happen. Don't worry. Um, so clean is no different. You know, in or out of clean easy, there's going to be challenges. But my team was there. So that was fantastic. Now, at this point, a couple of good friends joined our team, um, Ros and Alan, and they had joined us after years and years of me pestering and drip feeding them because I knew that this was the kind of business they'd be really good at. So my tip here is never to give up on anyone. OK, until I tell you where to go, keep on. OK, so in 2010, um, we then qualified for Cape Town, which was, oh, my goodness, it was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Um, we qualified on this trip with Rick and Ranty, who are part of our team um, and some of the other amazing Tigers. It was a, it was an incredible trip. The views from our hotel were absolutely beautiful. And that middle picture there was taken from the top of um, the Mount, Table Mountain, where we had a champagne reception. Um, absolutely awesome. 
So we went out on powerboat trips. That's me looking a bit windswept. But my goodness, was that fun. And then we went out to Boulders Beach to see the penguins. <laughs> they are so funny. They're funny little critters. I just love that day. And then we went to this lovely school, which we took um, lots of um, toys and games and, and, and school stuff out for this, this particular school. And you can see there that at that picture, it says, let the choices you make today be the choices you can live with tomorrow. And that's their motto. And I think that's absolutely awesome. You know, that is what we love about Clean Easy. It gives you the most incredible, incredible experiences. And out of this business, you're not going to do this kind of stuff, are you? OK. <clears throat> So in 2012, um, it was the Olympic year, of course, and there was such a feeling of expectation, you know, and I felt so different. And, and I think it was the Olympic year because I was so excited about that. Um, so statements of intent went up everywhere. We were, we were going to make this our year um, and our team had, you know, their own goals, which was fantastic. So in 2012, we broke a new gold leg. So we were silver executive. Now, that was brilliant. You know, we really loved that. And then we got our recognition in Birmingham. That's Ros and Eleanor going across the stage and us as well. So, you know, with our little ticker there, which was just brilliant. We loved it. So come to the end now, guys. Our goal for um, 2015 is SED. Our goal has always been SED. And if we don't care, we just move it on, you know, because you know, the, the goal should always be there. And Zig Ziglar says, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want so I hope this has given you some belief that you can do this too and as I've said before if I can anyone can and I will see you in Jamaica thank you very much I'm finished Nick <laughs>